Elie Lezra was born on November 24, 1960 in Jerusalem. After high school, Elie Lezra sought to join the Israeli military, but not just any military, the Israeli Defense Forces Golani Brigade, one of the most elite military units in the world. After spending three weeks in prison for refusing to comply with military orders to serve in the country's air force, Elezra passed the requisite tests and worked up his way to a lieutenant in the most highly decorated infantry unit. He served as an officer in the Israeli army, fought in the 1982 Lebanon war and nearing the end of four years of service, he was wounded. After being discharged from the service, he moved to Alaska, first working in a cannery and then as a taxi driver to make ends meet. While he started playing poker in a game with other Alaskan taxi drivers, Alezra really began to take the game seriously when he followed his sister and brother-in-law to Las Vegas where they opened up a number of retail businesses including several popular film development and t-shirt shops. He played regularly across the street from one location at the Stardust Hotel. Alezra continued to invest in commercial property and open new businesses. At the same time, he started to get more involved with poker. It all started with small games of the Stardust but as Ellie's knowledge and bankroll grew, so did his appetite. He started entering bigger buy-in tournaments in the city and also developed an interest for cash games. Right away, he began to play 2040 and 4080 at the Stardust and in 1990, he played his first tournament at the Horseshoe. By 91 and 92, he was playing in mixed Omaha 8 or better and stud 8 games with Scotty Wynn. The truth is, he immediately fell in love with the cash games but not so much with tournaments. Phil Helmut was playing all the tournaments, but they played mostly cash. Even though he was a fish at the beginning, Elezra liked poker. He was losing yes, but he enjoyed himself. Elezra's businesses were making enough money that he could go back and play blackjack or baccarat and lose some money. After that, he decided that poker was his thing. Playing casino games, he realized you're going to lose all the time anyway. With poker, Elezra thought he could at least have a good time doing it. As the 90s wore on, Alezra moved from the mid-stakes at the start of the biggest cash games in town at the Mirage, becoming a regular fixture at the 500-1000 stud with players like Howard Lederer, Annie Duke and David Gray. When the Bellagio opened in the fall of 1998 and Bobby Baldwin invited the high-stakes poker community over, Alezra was among those who made the move. Things turned around considerably for the one-time fish. He would play 1,000-2,000 or 1,500-3,000 with Doyle Brunson and Chip Reese and he would beat them. They always wanted to kick it up and playing three-handed with them, people thought Eli was completely crazy but Elezra was winning. Elezra admits he may have played too many hands when the games got bigger, leading to a bit of losing streak but he soon realized there was so much money in poker he needed to make a full-time commitment to the game and let his family take over his many businesses. At his first WSOP appearance in 1999, he made the final table in both the $2,000 Limit Hold'em and $2,500 Limit Omaha events. Elezra continued to build on his success with a final table at the 2001 WSOP $2,000 Limit Hold'em event and a 9th place finish in the 2003 $2,500 Limit Hold'em event. Elezra remained a fixture in the big game inside Bobby's room at the Bellagio for the next few years but when a Tennessee accountant and amateur poker player named Chris Moneymaker won the 2003 WSOP main event, kicking off the modern poker boom and drawing thousands of new players and money to the game, he started playing a few more tournaments as well. Eli played in the next WSOP main event in 2004. On the third day of the tournament, Elezra and Greg Raymer were among the bigger stacks and were at the same table to start the day. Alezra picked up two nines in the first hand of play but decided to fold to a Raymer 3-bet. The flop came ace-high with a 9 and it eventually revealed that Raymer had ace-king. To this day, Alezra wonders what might have happened as Raymer went on to win the title and he finished 170th. When Eli busted out, he was upset and he told the camera crew that he was going to win a million dollar tournament. Amazingly, Three months later, Alezra actually won $1.02 million in the 2004 World Poker Tour Mirage Poker Showdown, coming out on top of a final table that included Gabe Kaplan, John Juanda, and Scotty Wynn. 
He followed that with numerous caches, a second place finish at the Showdown's Heads Up Tournament in 2006 worth $83,000 where he lost to David Singer and a win at the Bellagio Friday Saturday Tournament in March of 2007 worth $109,000. In addition to that success, Alezra was also a part of the corporation. This was the group of poker players that took down billionaire Andy Beal for just over $47 million during a series of trips to Vegas to play the best pros heads up. Alezra does not consider himself a gambler. He never plays blackjack, roulette or any of the other games of chance available in Vegas. However, he became famous for a series of side bets he made during the 2007 World Series of Poker. During a discussion, Alezra contended that the difficulty of winning a WSOP bracelet was at its all-time high due to larger fields. Many poker pros disagreed and Alezra offered 5 to 1 odds on winning a WSOP bracelet in 2007. Many of the pros took him on the offer, including Phil Ivey, who bet him $100,000. In addition to Ivey, Eli Alezra took on 13 side bets varying in size from $50 to $100,000 each with pros including Doyle Brunson, Chip Reese, David Benjamin, Barry Greenstein and Brandon Adams to name a few. In addition to those odds, Alezra got 10 to 1 odds on himself winning a WSOP bracelet in a side bet with Barry Greenstein. By the end of 2007 WSOP, Ellie had his first ever WSOP bracelet after winning the 24th event, the 7 card stud High Low World Championship for $200,000 and an additional $250,000 from Barry Greenstein and $750,000 in side bet winnings as no one who bet him won a bracelet. Alezra won his first of what is now 4 bracelets in 2007 but his fame and notoriety in this game hasn't really come from the tournaments at all. Most people recognize Eli Alezra as a regular fixture on the Game Show Network's High Stakes Poker which ran for 7 seasons from 2006 to 11. He reminisces fondly about the origins of High Stakes Poker when he and poker juggernauts Chip Reese, Gus Hansen, Phil Ivey, Barry Greenstein and Doyle Brunson were approached in the Bellagio's Bobby's Room by poker pro turned producer Maury Escandani who wanted to televise their regular game. After playing high stakes poker, he was as famous as Matt Damon for poker. Contractual obligations with Full Tilt Poker left Alezra out of the show's seventh and final season but he had already made his mark, posting healthy wins in five out of six seasons he played on the show. Alezra certainly didn't lack confidence going into the filming of high stakes poker and coming out of it, the highs continued. He won his second WSOP bracelet in 2013 and continued to play in some of the biggest games in Las Vegas. Alezra's third bracelet came in 2015. While he's since stepped down in cash games, playing mostly 200, 400 and under, he'd had a sudden resurgence in tournament results since his Hall of Fame nomination was announced. He continues to play poker almost daily but he also works to manage his businesses and spends quality time with his family. Indeed. Ellie doesn't even consider himself as a poker pro. He's quick to say that he's a family man first, a successful businessman second and a poker player third. Alezra calls his wife Hilla his biggest supporter with whom he has five children. Alezra has a friendly demeanor, is likable to the players at the table and isn't afraid to show a bit of emotion about a bad beat or a lucky break. As of 2021, his total life tournament winnings amounts to $4.2 million and he won his fourth bracelet in 2019 in the $1,500 7 cut stud event for $194,000. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.